He has conducted international workshops training for Saudi Aramco biggest oil refinery in the world. And he he's a, a constant into the, he's a very active, uh, we can see law, he keep on conducting a lot of workshops, he's a very popular. So I'm not reading, there are a lot of workshops he has conducted. Most welcome, sir. Welcome. Hearty welcome. Sir. Over to you, sir, for the session. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Right. Uh, I'll be starting this uh, session. And uh, as far as the uh, topic for the this session is, I think uh, we, we have uh, two topics. One is the uh, testing of hypothesis. And uh, the second one tomorrow is something on a predictive analytics, which we call it as the uh, linear regression. So the way I'll do it, I'll first start with uh, what all this analysis is about, and uh, then I'll take you to uh, how. Sir, do you... uh, your voice is little low. Can you? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, and then I'll take you to this uh, actually how to test the how to formulate and how to test the hypothesis. Uh, we'll be using two open source tools. I think if you have been able to download it, otherwise I'll help you downloading it. And which are the other also tools available which the research scholars or people writing research papers actually use uh, as far as the analysis is concerned. And uh, I'll keep it very interactive. I'll keep it very interactive the way I've been conducting these sessions, right? Anything that you would like to ask, right? All of you are most welcome to ask any doubts which you have as far as your research paper is concerned and as far as your research work is concerned and not limited only to testing of hypothesis and linear regression. Though these are the two topics which I'll be covering, but anything else also, if you would like to know from my side, uh, you are most welcome to do so. So I'll just share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir, it is. Is my screen visible to all of you? Sir, it is yes, sir, your screen is visible. Okay. So we'll first start with just a basic explanation of uh, what all you can do as a part of analysis uh, in the research paper or in the research work you are doing. Just a glimpse of the different kinds of analysis which we can do. And then what are the different kinds of tools people use in the research paper? And then naturally the implementation of these tools. I'll show you a demonstration of how all these tests are conducted as far as uh, two basic tools are concerned. So the first question which naturally comes to our mind is what is actually a statistical analysis, which is a process of collecting and analyzing samples of data. You try to collect some sample of data and then you try to do some kind of an analysis to uncover the patterns and trends and predict what could happen next to make better and more scientific decisions. Right. So basically you are doing two things. You are trying to uh, cover some, you are trying to collect some sample of data and then you are trying to analyze that sample, trying to uncover what is the pattern or what is the trend in the data and then you do some kind of a prediction. Right. That is what basically you do as a part of statistical analysis. Now I'm not going into the collection of the data, which itself is very important. Right. The, that itself is a way that it's a scientific way of collecting the data. But as of now, I'll not go into how the data is collected because the emphasis is more on the analysis. There is a small difference between doing a statistical analysis and doing a data analysis, right? Because most of the people have seen the research papers using this word uh, interchangeably. But let me make it clear. When do you use the word statistical analysis and when do you use the word data analysis? Statistical analysis is more where your data size is uh, 
uh, is not that large as compared to when you do data analysis. It is a more, it is a reflection of the population for which the analysis is done and it is then your results are generally shared between people who understand the statistics. While data analysis is done on a larger data, right, and which you are sharing your results with non-technical individuals and your data is not that much clean. You require a lot of cleaning in the data, the way you clean the water which you drink before it is drinkable. So if you are doing it on a smaller sample size, then it is more of a statistical analysis and the analysis is generally done more of an academic research. But if you are doing an analysis on a very large sample, right, in which the analysis is done generally in the industry, right, where there is too much of cleaning of the data required. So I'll later on, I'll also come into, right, what kind of cleaning is required on the data which you have collected or what should you see in the data before you go on to do the analysis. Because if the quality of the input data is not good, you will not get good results, right? So all depends upon the kind of data which you have collected and what did you do to make your data uh, good for analysis? It's a simple rule uh, that if the quality of the input data is not good, then naturally you will not be able to derive good results out of it, irrespective of the kind of tool you are basically using. So that is a small difference between uh, statistical analysis and data analysis. Statistical analysis is more limited to the academic research and data analysis is more applicable for uh, a, a kind of analysis which you do on the industrial data, the data which you get from the industry Right, that is what is basically a data analysis. Now, what are the different things which you can do on your data? To begin with, you start doing some kind of a descriptive analysis where you try to tell what do you interpret from the mean, median, uh, standard deviation, right, quartile value, skewness, kurtosis, right. Uh, you need to tell that this is the kind of data which you have collected descriptively. And these are the statistical parameters which you can calculate and then you can tell looking at those descriptive analysis people can uh, people can find out that what is the nature of the data which you have collected the second is you put this descriptive uh, analysis in a visual manner right that is what you create some kind of a graph like um, pie chart bar plot histogram right you make a heat map you make a dendrogram you make a eichel plot you make a scree plot so many plots are there, right? So you make all those plots, right? Which tells the data in a visual manner. So these are the first two ingredients of any research. If you are really trying to do, the, do a good research, uh, then the first is the descriptive analysis. Then you follow it is using some kind of a uh, visual interpretation of the data which you have collected. So maybe we'll go through some kind of different uh, uh, visual statistics also and the way it is done. The next one is the inferential statistics which we'll be doing today where we try to conclude something about the population from the sample of data which you have collected. So your sample should be a representation of your population. The more is the sample representing your population, the more sure you are that whatever you get from the sample can be applicable on the population. So that is what we call it as inferential statistics. And it is in inferential statistics that you create some hypothesis, right? And then you try to find out a test which can be used to test the hypothesis. The most difficult part for a research scholar or for a person doing research is to identify the correct test to be used for that particular hypothesis which we have formulated. That is the most important thing <laughs> which a research scholar or a person doing research should pay emphasis to, right? So we'll see today, right, how to identify the correct test for a particular hypothesis, what can be, what should be looked into, right? And then uh, how do you do that particular test on at least two different platforms, which I'll be doing today. So that after descriptive statistics and visual inspection of the data, 
the next thing which is a part of most of the research is what we call it as the inferential statistics after inferential statistics we'll do we'll, the next part which is generally covered in most of the research papers is what we call it as the predictive analytics in which you are trying to make a prediction of something in your research right and uh, uh, a research without any prediction may not be that much uh, useful so you will have to do some kind of a prediction in your research and there are lot many things which can be predicted and there are lot many algorithms and tools which can be used to do this kind of a prediction right so I'll, maybe i'll tell you uh, what are the different tools people use for doing some kind of a uh, uh, prediction right and prediction can be also of a uh, number of types depending upon what is the objective of your uh, research so the next important ingredient of any research paper is some kind of a prediction next after prediction there are a few algorithms which we come under one umbrella that is what we call it as the prescriptive analytics now prescriptive analytics is a little more toned down version of predictive analytics in which you are looking for a particular solution right like a doctor gives you a prescription right he doesn't give you a prediction he gives you a prescription that this is the medicine you take for the ailment or for the disease you have so this is a more complex event right and it generally answers one question uh, what should be done next what should be done next if this is the scenario right now what should be done next and that is where uh, we move from a pure statistical algorithm to something which is known as a machine learning algorithm so i'll keep you uh, moving forward i'll keep you moving from a pure statistical algorithm to a machine learning algorithm and then what are the other deep learning algorithms which people are using right do remember all this is done to increase the quality of the research and that is what i think as of now is the need of the day right i'll just share with you one important statistic which has come out is you have this uh, qs rankings right for all the uh, institutions in the world right and the present qs ranking says that uh, we don't have a single institution in india in the top 300 right the first one to enter is the indian institute of science right and then followed by the iits and the ims the reason is that we don't have that quality of research we don't have patents coming out from the research so it is a high time that we start looking into this issue and uh, we try our best to make uh, to increase the quality of our research so last uh, uh, like uh, like i studied from two of the most premier institutes of the country and 20 years back when i did my graduation and post graduation just to share with you we were in, these premier institutes were in the top 100 and the last 15 to 20 years the things have uh, gone uh, gone down so much that none of our institutes are in the top 300 so it's high time that we increase the quality of the research and maybe if you start working on these tools trying to understand the analysis maybe we are able to increase the quality of the research so we move from predictive analytics to something which we call it as the prescriptive analytics so i'll tell you some algorithms <coughs> which come under the umbrella of the predictive analytics some algorithms which come under the umbrella of the prescriptive analytics now after predictive and prescriptive the next one to enter is one domain of exploratory data analysis which is also referred to as eds right trying to do some kind of an exploration on the data which you have collect collected looking out for some missing values looking for the outliers in the data <coughs> how to account for the missing values how to account for the data distribution whether your data is normally distributed or not that is what will come under one big
Now after exploratory data analysis, we have something which we call it as the causal analysis. That is what we call it as the causal analysis in which you are trying to find out what is causing what. And that is what we'll refer to as something as the correlation between the two variables. Trying to understand the concept of correlation, uh, multicollinearity, right? All this stuff we can do using this causal analysis. So just keep in mind that different kinds of analysis which we have when you try to write a research paper, right? They come under uh, descriptive statistics. They come under visual inspection of the data. They come under predictive analytics, they come under inferential statistics, something known as the prescriptive analytics, something known as the exploratory data analytics, and something known as the causal analysis. So these are some of the basic analysis which you do, right, when you start thinking of doing the data analysis. I just wanted to tell you that all the analysis which we'll be covering, they will come under these basic heads. Now to do these analysis, we have a number of tools available on which the on which generally the research scholars or the researchers work on, right? And two, when we have two basic kinds of tools available in the market, which people use. One is what we call it as the license tools, for which you need some kind of a license, and you must have heard of people using SPSS, uh, SAS, MATLAB, right? All these LISRL, uh, SPSS, MOS. SPSS statistics, they are all the licensed tools which people can use as far as the analysis is concerned. The second variety of tools which we'll be focusing today on is what we call it as two open source tools, right? One is what is known as R and the second one is what we call it as Python, right? Now these tools are becoming more popular because they don't require any license, right? First, second is, uh, you just need to download it from the net and install it in your laptop. The third is they give you more functionality. They more give you more power as a research scholar right, to do different kinds of analysis, which may not be possible, which may not be possible when you are using a, a license tool. Right? So for writing a good research paper, now people are shifting to these two basic tools as far as the analysis is concerned. So what I'll be doing today is to give you some input into how do you do this testing of hypothesis because this particular session is more towards testing of hypothesis. So how to do testing of hypothesis on one tool, which is R, and then how to do the same testing of hypothesis using a second tool, which is, a, which is known as Python, right? So that is what my agenda is as far as uh, this uh, session is concerned. Anything which you feel you don't understand, right? Please feel free to ask, right? Uh, uh, whether it is something related to R or whether it is something related to Python. Even small things you won't, uh, uh, you would like to ask, you are absolutely welcome to ask. I'll try to uh, solve all your queries so that you can make a beginning of using these tools and then you can take your research work forward because the most difficult part is to make a beginning. How do you begin using these tools? And then uh, you can keep on uh, uh, adding more and more analysis to these particular two tools. So my concentration will be on, first is to begin with inferential statistics because that is something which is widely used in the research papers. And the second thing will be, how do you implement doing testing of hypothesis in the two open source tools R and Python, right? So this is the way I'll begin with uh, formulating some hypothesis for all of you, right? And then trying to see how does it turn in R and what is the kind of results we get in R and how actually we make some kind of an interpretation on the results which we get in R. Okay, so the first thing is we need to uh, uh, download this R and uh, Python right as far as your laptop is concerned. I hope um, at least most of you must have uh, done this part so that you can work with me and implement the code in your laptop. And then if you find anything which you are not able to understand, you can always share your screen. Because this is the, if, uh, if, you, if you share your uh, problems, your doubts and your doubts and problems get cleared, you will be able to move forward. 
right so i'll just share my screen right now this is the first i'll show you is it the one which i'll be using i'll share this data set also with all of you right now this is the r console which we have right i just increase the font size so that everything is visible to all of you right now this is the r console which we have right now there are two or three variants of r on which you can actually work one is what we call it as the r console the one which i am showing you which is the most like the general form of r where you can do everything the second one is what you call it as r studio that also you can download and you can use it that is more graphical and it will help you when you start writing the commands the third is something in between r console and r studio which is what we call it as the r commander r commander so these are the three variants which all of you can use as far as using the open source tool r is concerned right so i'll i'll put this into a document also right and i'll share this so that you can use this document right for any reference <coughs> so there are three variants one is what you call it as the r console that is what you call it uh, the r console which i am working on which is the most uh, general thing right the second one is r studio which also you can download from the net and install it it will not take too much of a time and in something between r console and r studio is something which is known as an r commander right so r studio and r commander are also known as the ide ide means that integrated ide that means integrated design environment for integrated design environment for working on for working on r right and r is what basically r is a very popular uh, r is a popular scripting language right scripting language for data analysis for data analysis and and graphics this is the way this is a simple way you can define what actually r is right i hope some of you at least must have installed r right uh, and the best uh, way to do it or the any any documentation you require about r you can always visit the cran website this is the authentic source to get any information about r this is known as comprehensive comprehensive r archive network even when you want to install r you always go to this website which gives you every authentic information about r every authentic information about any about you go to the website right there are other websites also available but the best one is the uh, the parent website for anything on r is the cran website you can search it on google right and it basically starts for comprehensive r archive network right though r was uh, it's a very old language and but it has gained popularity somewhere around 1995 right that is where from where r has started gaining some uh, it has started gaining popularity and as of now there is always a tussle between r and python out of all the scripting languages available these are the two most popular scripting languages most which most of the people are using now the next is naturally for doing any data analysis you need some kind of a data you need some kind of a data so uh, the first thing we can do is to import data to import data into r right from an external file from an external file right so the first thing we will require is some kind of a data on which the analysis has to be done so either you can import data into r from an external file or 
you can even create data in R. Create data in R. Right? That's the second way. The third one is you have lots of data sets already present inside R. I'll tell you where it is. Right? And all of us can use those data sets for our research. But they are authenticated data sets. Right? And all of us can use those data sets in R research work if they if they can be used right the only thing is you need to find out what data sets can be of interest to you and how can you uh, access those data sets in r where are those data sets in r which can be accessed that all information i'll try to share with all of you but as of now uh, things have changed a little bit right that this is the way i understand that you already have lots of data available you lots have data available and the basic purpose of getting uh, collecting primary data is getting more and more obsolete right unless until you are trying to do something which is done for the first time which generally is not right so uh, the view which i have is that lots of data is available on the net secondary data right you just need to find out where that secondary data is and you can download it as far as your research work is concerned, right? That is what is the digital age, right? Where, and that is why this data analysis is getting so popular. It's not only in research, but basically the data analysis is done. The basic reason you do data analysis is to take some decisions, right? To take some scientific decisions. Right. So decisions can only be taken if some analysis is now done. I'll share with you lots of work uh, which uh, we have been doing as far as data analysis is concerned. So you will uh, realize that it is not only limited to doing it as a part of research, but then it is uh, it is done as far as taking the decision is, is concerned in most of the uh, industries and most of the departments. So there are three ways to get data into R. One is to import data into R from an external file. The second one is to create data in R. And the third one is to use the data sets already present in R, right, for doing some kind of a analysis. I'll be concentrating on the first issue more, why? Because most of the data sets are present in an external file. Now, just to, just to get a feel from all of you, right, uh, uh, where do you find most of the data sets in which uh, there are formats in which you will find the data, right? So the external data, the external data is present in many formats, in many formats, right? Now there are basically two kinds of data which we have, right? I mean, if you see the data, it is basically present in two basic forms. Right. Anybody, any idea? What are the two basic forms in which just to interact with all of you, get some feel from all of you, right? What are the two basic formats in which we get data? Or what are the two basic formats in which you collect data? Okay. I think uh, some of you are writing it on the chat box, right? So uh, most of you say, that the data is present in a CSV file. Some of you say it is present in an Excel file as a text file, right? Uh, okay. So these are just some of the formats in which you have this data, right? The formats which you have all mentioned, they come into one big umbrella. That is what is known as what? That is known as what? Whether you talk of Excel, whether you talk of CSV, whether you talk of text, they are all basically, it's good that all of you interact, right? And just keep on interacting, uh, you learn uh, much more, right? And I'll keep this chat box in front of me. Anything would you like to share? I'll just see. So basically, there are two kinds of data. One is what we call it as the structured data, right? So there is something known as a structured data. The data which you get from an Excel sheet, you get it from CSV format, you get it from SAV format, you get it from SAS, you get it from a database. They are all structured data. Right. That means the data is in two columns. Right. So you you can you can import a structured data into. Second, it even becoming more popular nowadays is 
what we call it as the unstructured data unstructured data right can somebody uh, can somebody tell which is the most important source for an unstructured data or what are the uh, one or two most important source which we have for an unstructured data right so somebody says social media right uh, facebook right so we have something like a uh, uh, the social media one absolutely right the second one is what people write blogs right blogs are also uh, a way twitter right they all generate unstructured data then the next most important way to get unstructured data is the data collected on a call center right now most of the people have most of the companies have the call, call center and every now, now and then you get calls uh, for some kind of a feedback if you have an airtel broadband right people will ask you about your experience of using airtel broadband people will ask you experience of working on jio so every now and then right and whatever you speak that particular thing is getting recorded which is very important for the organization very very important and that is what we call it as the qualitative data right just for an example i'll tell you right on a call center right every hour one terabyte of data is getting recorded so you can you can find out how many terabytes of data is getting recorded every day every fortnight every uh, month that is a huge data which is getting recorded and then those that's that that huge chunk of data is getting analyzed is getting analyzed right and on analysis you get to know so many things right and those things need to be known so that you can take some important decisions as far as your product is concerned so we have basically two kinds of data one is a structured data and one is an unstructured data and we have everything uh, in r or python for using structured and unstructured data right now I, uh, unstructured data is the one which we are saying uh, unstructured data can be textual data which you get on a blog right it can be what it can be a, a data from an image it can be a data from an audio it can be a data from a video these are all unstructured data right so uh, the data is not limited only to numbers now right the data has spread from numbers to a textual data to a data which you get from the image right like you use the image for two basic things just to give you an insight right for what we call it as uh, image detection right or something which we call it as face detection right now you go to uh, uh, you go to some of the big airports right you go don't go into that hassle of uh, uh, getting your clearance uh, which takes so many minutes or hours it's a matter of seconds now right and that is where we use the unstructured data which is getting generated through the image which is captured right and then that image which is captured is processed and within a second you get to know whether this is the correct person or not so lots of unstructured data is getting also generated right and uh, uh, my uh, suggestion to all of you is that you work on something which is which is a combination of both uh, unstructured and structured data right so it's not that <coughs> analysis <coughs> analysis is limited only to structured data right um we work on uh, lots of unstructured data and the beauty of r and uh, python is that it gives you those tools where you can work on both structured and unstructured data as of now most of my talk is limited to structured data but given an opportunity we can always interact on how actually we work on unstructured data right it's wonderful to work right something very interesting i'll tell you right and you get lots of insights on the data which you have collected it's a very popular thing which is now uh, being done in good research papers which is being done in in the industry so we have two basically kinds of data structured data and unstructured data now once we come to like uh, let us start begin using something which is an unstructured data right and uh, as all of you have written very wonderful you have the structured data in an excel file you have it as a csv file csv basically stands for comma separated values comma separated values 
then you have the 